name is Chris. Today I am going to read the story. Puss and Boots. Chapter 1. The Clever Cat. Once there was a... There was a... Sixth chapter. Once there was a poor... Miller who had three sons. When the when he died, he left them all he had in the world: his mill, his donkey, and his orange tabby cat. Before anyone could blink, the Eldest, oldest son took Camille, then the middle brother grabbed the donkey. Tom, the youngest, was left with Cat. He wasn't impressed. You two can work together and earn a living. Living, Tom grumbled. What can I do with Puss? Maybe I will have to eat him. Later, when they were alone, Puss jumped into Tom's lap. Things are not as bad as they seem, he said. With a pair, find me a bag and a pair of boots. And you will see. Tom was asked on on me, yet Puss could talk. And then Tom remembered that. He had often seen pass a thing incredibly clever tricks to cat, rat, and mice. So Tom found Puss a leather bag and a shiny pair of boots. He gave him a cloth of boots, uh, clothes and a fluffy hat too. The cat filled the bag with carrots and Strut of into the fields. Chapter two. Puss goes to work. Puss headed for a field where he knew there was lots of rabbits. Opening the bag, he stretched it out on the ground. He pretend to die.
Jesus as he is begged, a foolish young rabbit came bouncing along and sniffed the carrots as it poked its quivering nose into the bag. Push past it. Push was pus was del be delighted with his cat. He marched straight to the palace and asked to see the king. In front of the throne, Puss blowed low. Your Rolly, Roller Highness, I have brought you a gift from my master, the Duck of Caradas. How kind. Thank you, Master, very much, replied the king. The next day, Puss went into the fields again. This time, he had among some golden corn. He held his bag wide open and took Birds flew straight in Puss chocolate as he pulled the draw draws string tight. Once more, Puss took his catch to the king. Puss became became a regular visitor to the palace. Soon, the king began to wonder who was. Generous duck was. Princess, Chapter Three. Princess Arabella. Princess Arabella. One day, Puss and Tom were walking by the river. Puss knew the king would be driving by with his beautiful. Daughter Princess Arabelle, and he had a plan. When Puss stopped it, the roller caught. In the distance, he turned to Tom. Quick, take over your clothes and jump in the river. And he hold him. It's freezing. Tom was puzzled, but the, but he trusted Puss, so he jumped in. A minute later, Tom was even more. Puzzling. First, Puss hid 
all his clothes under a large star stone. Then he straight to screen. Help, help, help. Rescue me. Rescue my master. The duck of Propus. Yes, the royal coach came by the king. Recognized parts. Guards pulled the duck out of the water what at once. He altered. Dreadful thief attacked my master and stole his clothes. Pus explained. That's trouble, he said the king, but I think I can help. He spanned his fingers and a servant ran up. Go to the palace and feed some clothes for the duck. <laughs> He's a very clever cat. All this time, Princess Arabel he had been watching from the coach. When she saw Tom in his fine new clothes, she jumped from her seat. He was so handsome. Tom bent and kissed the princess. Arabel on the head. Oh, she gasped and smiled. The king insisted that pus and the dog join them on their drive. You go, master, said Puss, pushing Tom forward. I have some air ends to run. Chapter 4 40 <coughs> Forty fields. As the coach rumbled along, Puss raised a hind. He still had lots to do. Before a long time, he came to some men mourning a field. Push clapped his paw. Listen to me, he shouted. When the king drivers might tell him this field belongs to the dogs, dog of Carbas, 
or my master will cop you into min kemit. Then men didn't dress us. Sure enough, when the king arrived to ask them who wandered the field, the men had been so frightened by Pasa's treat, they all spoke together. Tom was as conscious to hear them tell the king this was his this was his light, but he decided to plan along. Pierce ran ahead. In the next field, he passed the man were repining again. Tell the king this field belongs to the dock of Carbus. He snarled or my master will guide you into min meat. Horrified, the man agreed. When he Rollo Court arrived at the next field. The king got out. This field was twice as big as the one before. Who won this field? He asked some workers. The duck of Carbus. Your Highness, said they replied. Pus made them same street treat to everyone to meet the king was all astonished at how much land the duck wandered. Castle order. Finally, Puss reached a um, meaningful castle. It was won by a fierce arm, but that didn't stop Puss. This arm happened to be one of the richest orgers in the country. All the lands that they had passed on the way was actually his. The orger greed pass licking his lip and invited the cat inside. Puss smiled. He was about to try his biggest trick. I have heard 
he said to the orange that you can change yourself into any creature you want. Could you really turn into an elephant or a lion? It was true. In second, the art turned into a huge lion. Pez was terrified. After draw a line and warning for a while, he orange turned back to himself. That was the most fi frightening thing I have ever seen, cried Pass. But I have also been told. He went on the you that you can change into a really small animal, such as a rat or a mouse. Of course, said the orange, rather boastful. And he died. Did I? And he did. As soon as Puss saw the tiny mouse scampering around the leaf on his end, gobbled him up. Chapter 6 A Rolling Wedding. By this time, the rolling Koch had reached the own castle. Let's invite, said Kita King, who wants to see who won such a gar garden home. Here, the scotch clattering over the drawbridge. He fell open the castle doors. Your Majesty, welcome to the castle of my master, said the dog of Carbas. You mean your own this splendid castle as well as all that land? The king of Tom amazed trying to hide his surprise. Tom nodded. Would you mean if I took a look around? asked the king. Not at all, said Tom. In the band cutting hall, a grand feast had been laid out for a orange. The table was carmined with pies, meat, cheese, surface, and cakes. The king's mouth stirred to water. That does, that does look good, he said. 
Please join us for lunch. Such pass. <coughs> the king was imprinted with his the dog's wonderful castle and princess Arabella, Arabella. So he was kind to let them share his, his feast. As the king ate, then he noticed that the dog and his daughter were getting along very well. Indeed, he realized the dog would make a perfect prince. I think actually they're like right? By the end of a small meal, the king could not keep his throat to himself. Duck of carpet. He disliked. Will you marry my daughter? He wedding. A wedding was arranged for the very nice day. And so, and so, the miller's youngest son became the princess and lived happily in the castle with his beautiful bird. Right. Tom's brothers were both mad years as for pus. He became a Lord and never had to chase mice again. It's bad for fun. The end. Yesterday I read the story. It was fun. Then bye.